So this last week, I started to think about tree-like data structures where I have objects that have children that have children that have children and so on and so forth, and how we can use recursion to render those objects in an Angular application. Now, my first instinct was to reach for recursive components, that is a component whose view renders a component that is the same type of component, uh, and so on and so forth down the line, kind of each rendering a different section of the data tree. But then I remembered that in Angular, the ng template directive affords some pretty amazing flexibility. And before I reached for recursive components, I wanted to see if I could use ng template references to recursively uh, iterate over a tree like data structure. So, just to jump back here into the component, this is my app component. And um, you can see here I have a tree. The tree starts with a tree node, and then each tree node has a label and then a collection of tree node children. Uh, and then I just initialize this with some test data here. Let's see, first, second, we have kind of two little branches. Um, and then I'm also exposing a select node, which will highlight uh, a selected node in the tree, and then I'm logging that. Now, first, let's just jump into the browser to see what this looks like. I'll refresh here, make sure we have the up to date. So here is my recursively rendered tree structure. And you can see that as I click here, I'm highlighting the appropriate node, and you can see that uh, I'm logging that node to the console as well. So uh, let's look at how we use ng template to render this data structure recursively. And I came up with two approaches. In the first approach, uh, what I have here is I'm using ng template to define my recursive template. And you can see that I'm assigning it to a view local variable node template ref. And then down here, I'm using another ng template instance to essentially kick off that recursion. So that node template ref, right, which is the view local reference to that template, I'm using ng template to kick off, uh, to essentially render the top level. And I'm passing in as the rendering context here, this uh, object that uses this implicit. Now, the reason I'm using implicit here to define the root node is because internally to the template, I'm using the ng4 directive to recursively render the template. So you can see here that um, I have an implicit reference to a node, and here I'm outputting the label, and then I'm checking to see if there are any children. And then inside of that check, I'm using the ng4 directive, and I'm looping over that children collection. And instead of having an inline template for the ng4 directive, I'm passing in the ng4 template property. And the property that I'm passing in is, as you can guess, that recursive reference to that top level element, uh, ng directive. So essentially, I'm using, I'm defining this template as this reference, and then internally to that template, I'm rendering uh, it again inside of this loop. Now, when we use ng4, to render a template reference, we don't have an opportunity to pass in a context object. The ng4 is implicitly passing in the iteration object as it unrolls the collection. So in this case, the context object is this uh, implicit binding here, let node, instead of saying something like let node equals and an explicit export, uh, which is again why I have to use implicit here in this kind of funky data structure. Now, the nice thing is, if we look at the markup, and not that we should spend too much time worrying about what our markup looks like, um, but you can see that essentially, we have just kind of one comment here above each one of these things. And keep in mind the one comment, because now if we, when we look at the other approach, uh, we'll see something slightly different. So now let's go back here to the component, and instead of linking to app component htm, let's link to app component alt. And now if we come back into the browser here, here you can see I was using the ng4, and if I refresh, now I'm using the alternative ng template, and you can see it renders the same tree, and it has the same behavior. I can click through and I get the rendering. So let's look at the different implementation. In the alt approach, Again, we have an ng template here to define our recursive template. And again, I'm storing that recursive template reference into a view local variable node template ref. Um, and this time, instead of just having the implicit binding for let node, I'm saying let node equals node. 
And that's because in this version, we're going to be able to explicitly define the context object for the template. So let's jump down to the bottom first. So again, I'm using another ng template instance to initiate that recursive action. I'm passing in my recursive template reference. And I'm again passing in a context object for the root. Um, but again, instead of using the dollar sign implicit, which we were using here, right? Dollar sign implicit in the first approach. In the second approach, I'm saying, let's, I want to call it node. I want to be more explicit about how the data is being defined. And we can do that because this time we're not using ng4 internally. We're going to be using another ng template instance. So we look here. Um, most of this is the same, right? We check to see if there are any children. We're going to ng4 loop over the children. Uh, but this time, instead of using the ng4 template property, right? just to compare again, instead of using the ng4 template property, we're going to be using an inline template for the ng4, and our inline template happens to include another ng template instance, and this one is where we're going to recursively call that top-level ng template reference. And here, instead of implicitly relying on the ng4 context object, we're going to explicitly provide an ng template context. And that's why we have an opportunity now to be more um, clear in how we pass our data from one call stack to the next call stack, essentially, of the view rendering. I'm not relying on that dollar sign implicit binding. I'm explicitly saying I'm going to pass in a context object which has node, and the node is going to map to child, and the child is what's coming out of the ng4 directive. So again, a little bit more explicit here. There's a little bit more markup here in our view template, and if we look at what happened in the browser, you can see there's actually going to be a little bit more markup in our rendered HTML. So before, remember I was saying there used to be just one comment above all the things, and now you can see that we have two comments, and that's because we have one comment for the ng4 and one comment for that nested ng template, whereas previously the ng4 was taking care of both the iteration and the ng template execution, so to speak. So we only needed uh, one binding. Now we have two bindings. Again, not a huge deal. I wouldn't worry too much about the markup. Um, and this is actually probably a bit more akin to having recursive components, right? You can think of this as sort of like a component inside of an ng4. Um, so again, this would just be more akin to a traditional recursive component. But we don't have to have recursive components. This is a single component, right? It's my single um, app component. It links to a single view, and inside of that single view, we're able to recurse over a nested data structure using nothing but ng template. And uh, anyway, I think that's pretty cool. And uh, I think there's a lot of power in ng template. I don't have to reach for it all that often. Um, but you can see that it provides for a lot of flexibility in how we execute our view rendering and how we define the kind of inputs and outputs of a, of a component.